Now that we understood the build life cycle, let's look at the pom.xml in more detail. The expansion of pom is project object model. The project object model is where you define various things about this particular project. So there's an XSD that you need to adhere to. This is not really important. But if you look at the most important parts of the pom.xml, the first important part of the project is the name you give to it. The name you give to a project is a combination of a group ID and the artifact ID. So a group ID and the artifact ID is what is used to uniquely identify this particular project. So if some other project wants to use this, they can say, I want this group ID, this artifact ID, along with which version. So a version indicates which version of the artifact that you would want to use. For example, Spring has a number of versions, right? It has version 1.0, version 2.0. Now the latest one is something like 4.2.4. So this version is which version of that particular framework. So in here, the version indicates the version of this particular project. So we are right now working on 0.0.1 .0 snapshot. A snapshot is to indicate the fact that this is a version in development. Once I complete the development for this, I'll make this version 0.0.1 .0 so that others can use it. So when I see a snapshot in a version, then it means somebody is actively developing that particular project. I should not use it because a snapshot is something I'm developing right now. Once I complete development of this, what I would do is I'll make the version 0.0.1 .0 and I will release a jar out. And anybody who wants to use that can use the released version 0.0.1. That's the name and the version inside the POM. The other things you define in the POM are the most important part of any Java project. Those are the dependencies. So this first Maven project is dependent on JUnit. It needs a version 4.4 of JUnit. And that's what is specified as part of the dependencies. Whatever you want as, as available to be able to run this project, whatever jars you need, all those things you need to specify as a dependency. Let's say I want the Hibernate dependency to run this project. How do I download it? Think about it. The way I can do that is again, I would go to Google and type in Hibernate Maven POM, or you can type in Hibernate Maven dependency as well. It doesn't really matter. And then you would get the Hibernate Maven POM artifact details. I would want the core Hibernate ORM functionality. So I would choose the version 5.0.6 final, which is the latest that is available right now. So I can take this dependency, right click, copy, and I can make use of the dependency in here. Now I'm adding a dependency on Hibernate for this particular project. You'd see what would happen now. So I'm not saved it yet. So you don't see it in the Maven dependencies, but as soon as I click save, you'd see that there's a building workspace going on here. So Eclipse is trying to build the workspace. So that means it's actually trying to download the Hibernate jar. So it downloads the Hibernate jar and you'd see after some time that the Hibernate jar would come in here. So there you see the Hibernate core dot jar has come in and along with it, it has brought in a lot of other jars as well. We'll discuss about them a little later when we talk about transitive dependencies. But the most important thing right now is in the Maven dependencies of this particular project, we have the Hibernate core as well. That's the third important part of a Maven POM. The third important part of a Maven POM are the definitions of the dependency. There are a few tricky things about the POM.xml that we would look at in the further steps. One of the tricky things is something called scope. Scope of a project is something which we'll look at a little later. The other thing which we'll look at later is packaging. So a packaging defines how you'd want to package the output of this particular form. The default packaging is jar. So when this particular project is compiled and executed and installed, then it is packaged up as a jar. That's what the packaging would indicate. We would look at it in detail a little later. The other thing which we would be looking at is how you can make the version having a range instead of a specific version. Those are the three things which we would look at in a further steps. 
Until then, thanks for joining more than a million students who are learning from us. At In 28 Minutes, we defined a learning roadmap for Java and front-end developers. We created more than 25 courses covering all the topics that you are seeing on the screen. There are four things you can do to make best use of these courses. Number one is Udemy. You will find a link in the description of the video to our Udemy profile. We are teaching a lot of courses on Udemy and most of them are free. Number two, visit our website www.in28minutes.com. You would find tons of information including how you can register for our trainings and the link to Udemy and our GitHub code as well. Number three, visit our GitHub repository. With more than 20 repositories covering varied examples, it's a comprehensive source of information and code. Last but not the least, you'll find a set of discount codes for all our Udemy courses in the description as well. Feel free to use them. Good luck from the team here at In28Minutes, your destination for high quality step-by-step -step courses.